guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is actually going to be one that is super, super requested. And this is gonna help you out whether you want to start a YouTube channel for the first time, or maybe you already have started one up and you're just looking for ways to grow it and ways to become successful. I have been doing YouTube for three years full time. I think I've had my channel for five years, but really three years ago is when I really, really got into it. I was able to quit my full time job and started making a good amount of money from YouTube. And YouTube is actually my only source of income. The cool thing about YouTube is the more time and effort that you put into it, the more successful your channel comes and the more money that you can get in the end. So in this video, it's kind of like no topic off limits. I'm gonna talk about all the things that I know that you guys want to hear about, such as getting paid because there's numerous different ways to get paid on YouTube, how to get sponsors, camera and lighting, editing thumbnails, editing videos, basically everything from A to C. So basically the way that I'm gonna run this video is just start listing off tips that I feel are really, really helpful. And these are the things that I would wanna know when I was first starting my channel that I wish there was someone to tell me. So the number one thing that I'm gonna to recommend to you guys is to be really scheduled and organized with your work. Since YouTube is my full-time job, what I like to do Monday through Friday is actually set out a schedule. For me, I work nine to five because I told myself, okay, if this is gonna take place of a full-time job, I'm gonna work just as hard as if it was a full-time job, nine to five. Now, I personally wake up with more energy in the morning. I know some people are kind of like night owls and they feel like they can have more energy and be more present in the moment at night. So I suggest that you have a certain day that you film every single week. For me, I have two days a week that I film and it's always first thing in the morning when I wake up. So know if you're gonna film Monday through Friday or on the weekends if you're working around another job and if you're gonna do morning or night. And then I also like to split up my week. I have my filming days, my editing days, my email days, and then my future video planning days. So I like to have everything very, very organized from the get-go. On top of that, I definitely wanna recommend you guys for every single video that you do to do your research. You don't wanna come up on your channel and act like you know what you're talking about when you're really just winging it. You guys, a lot of you guys notice that I always have like pen and paper and a pad of notes for almost, I would say, 98% of every single video that I do. If you're doing a makeup tutorial, fine, it's not necessary, but if I'm talking about skincare or doing a haul of products or a company review, I like to do my homework ahead of time and that's definitely that I schedule within my week before I sit down to film. My next tip is create videos on topics that you would actually be interested in sitting down and watching. I feel like when you have a passion for something, it really radiates off the screen rather than if you're just doing something that's very popular at the moment. For example, if a lot of people are doing what's in my bag videos or Halloween tutorials, that does not mean that you have to do what everyone else is doing. With that being said, it also is important and this is it sounds kind of contradictory but you want to come out with videos also um, that are what people are searching at the moment. So again, around Halloween time, a lot of people do search for Halloween tutorials, but maybe you don't feel comfortable doing something like that, or you're kind of just doing it because you feel like everyone else is. Maybe you're into more Halloween food recipes or Halloween decoration, DIY crafts. I would find a way to come out with videos that you know are being searched at the moment, but it's also something that you're passionate about. I would definitely think about what time of the year is it. For example, right now we're in summer, so a lot of times right now people are searching for summer recipes, for summer outfits, for summer makeup, for summer hair tutorials, really anything related to summer. And then as we get towards the end of the summer, it kind of drifts off to going back to school. So back to school outfit of the days, back to school um, lunch recipes, back to school makeup tutorials and stuff like that. So basically to sum that up, I recommend that you come out with videos that you're passionate about and that you know are being searched at the moment, but not what you just see everybody else doing. Next tip is utilize tag words. There are so many girls that I know that do YouTube that kind of just leave that little tag word box empty and it is so important to fill it out I basically rape that tag box until it tells me that you cannot fit any more there that is what is gonna make your video come up in the search so I would every single little detail if you did a makeup tutorial I would put smoky eye eyelashes uh, dramatic makeup clubbing makeup even things that don't really have to do with your video it's a little tip and trick just fill out that tag box with as many tags as you can Trust me, it's really important if you want your video to be seen. A little trick that I wanna share with you guys is that somebody once told me that two of the most popular 
searches on YouTube is the phrase how to and OOTD, which is outfit of the day. So no matter what my video is about, I always make sure to have those two tags in my tag box descriptions. And it might sound a little bit sneaky, but I don't know. I just want my video to be viewed. So that's what I do. Is there really a train passing right now at nine in the morning? Well, I guess, I guess that would make sense. But still, Next is upload consistently, but not too much. So let me break that down. If you're coming out with a channel that's brand new or that you're trying to grow, what I did before I got to my first 100,000 subscribers is that it came out with a new video every other day. And I feel like having so much videos out there really helped to get my channel out there. So I do recommend that you come out with as much videos as you possibly can. But with that being said, I would choose quality over quantity. Don't come out with half-ass videos or crappy videos just for the sake of getting a video out there. I feel that if you have a video that has potential to go viral or something that will be searched and viewed a lot, it's gonna help you out a lot more in the long, the long run, the long, long term, rather than just having a lot of videos or a lot of little videos that nobody's really gonna watch. So I do recommend that you come out with as much videos as possible, but stand behind each and every single video that it's a good quality video and not something that you're just putting out there for the hell of it. So my next tip is invest in good lighting and an okay camera. I don't think that you have to have the top of the line most amazing camera out there. There are a lot of point and shoot cameras or even those cameras that kind of have that little selfie screen that pops up. I actually had one and when I went on vacation I thought I packed it and I either left it in the taxi on the ride to the airport or I don't know it vanished into thin air. I wish I had it to show to you guys but it was like $250 and it's basically a point and shoot camera but it has a little LCD screen that pops out of the back so you could see yourself like a viewfinder so you could see yourself while you film I recommend investing in a camera like that not in what I have a lot of people ask me all the time what camera do, do I use but this is a camera that I invested in after two years of really having the money from YouTube to invest I don't believe that you should get this camera off the bat but for those of you that are wondering I use the Canon Rebel T5i with the standard regular lens I have purchased two other lenses to go with it but for some reason the kit lens works best for me and then as far as my lighting I get this question a lot I use a diva ring light I know that if you search ring light into Amazon that there are a lot of other alternatives that are maybe like around $200 but again that's something that I do not feel that you need to invest in when you're first starting YouTube I would go to Target and get two of those like tree branch lights that have like maybe three or four I'll pop a picture up right now because a lot of you guys are probably like what the heck is she talking about um, I would purchase those lights they're probably like $15 each from Target put one on each side bam good to go next tip use YouTube to learn how to edit videos this is something that I had to do it's something that I still have have to do my editing game not gonna lie to you guys is not that strong at all I feel that I do the bare minimum there are some people that I'm personally friends with that I feel like they have so much skills in the editing department but that is what makes their channel their channel I'm not gonna copy anyone um, this is my style of doing things and I mean I would like to improve myself a little bit but anyway I am going off on a tangent basically what I want to tell you guys is use YouTube to learn how to edit videos the really popular ones here on YouTube are iMovie if you have a MacBook I personally have a Windows computer because I got one that is specifically for video editing it's called a Lenovo and it's a video editing, editing slash gaming laptop so it has a lot of room on it to really store a lot of things that was another investment it's even more expensive than a Mac but I feel like that was something that I was having a problem with my last computer crashed all the time and it was something that was really getting annoying to me so that's something again down the line that I invested in. If you already have a Mac, you can go ahead and use iMovie. And if you have a Windows computer, you can use what I use in the beginning. I used, um, oh, what the heck is the name of that? It was Movies Window Maker, no, Movie, Windows Movie Maker, I think was the name of it. And it was very standard, but it started being a little bit choppy and messed with the quality of my videos. If you're just beginning, I do feel like it's okay to use, but what I use now on my Windows com computer is my Magix Movie Edit Pro. And I will put the name here because a lot of you guys always ask me about it. It was a free download off the internet. I didn't have to pay anything. And in order to learn how to use it, I just YouTubed it. Music, two things. Either one, take full advantage of the YouTube Music Library. It's right on the side. It says library over by your analytics and your settings. 
YouTube has a library of music that you can download and use for free. Whenever I venture out into other music, my videos get flagged and I cannot have ads on them, which means I do not get paid. Um, if you want to kind of take a risk, you can have like independent music in your videos where you contact um, different people on YouTube that have covers or if you just um, search different remixes to songs that you really like, say it's a, I don't know, Drake song or something that you like and you type in Drake remix and you find someone that has it on YouTube or a cover, you can download it and put it into your video if you have permission from them, but I just have the worst luck with music. That's why I stick to the YouTube, the YouTube music library or else my videos get flagged, which is the most annoying thing ever. Next tip, catchy title and thumbnails really really important that is like the first impression that someone is going to see to make them want to click on your video if you have a really crappy dark thumbnail I feel like you're not gonna get any views on your video if you have a whatever title you're not gonna get any views on your video you have to play around with words and make it appealing to the viewers so basically for the pick um, what am I talking about the thumbnail um, what I like to do is edit the entire thing on my phone. I use pick stitch and then I use shot text to add the title. I play around with it a lot. I play around with the brightness, with the sharpness. I add colors in. Sometimes I add emojis in. If you guys want to see exactly how I edit my thumbnails on my phone, I can definitely do a video on that. I know a lot of other people, I would say the majority of people on YouTube use pickmonkey.com if you want to go ahead and edit it on your computer. And definitely just make sure that you dedicate the time to doing that because in the long run, it can have a big impact on how many people view your video. The next tip that I want to talk about is having a nice background. You don't need to have a fancy background. I just feel like it needs to be clean and bright. There are a lot of times that I feel just filming in front of a plain white wall will look better than half of the backgrounds that I see on YouTube where it's dark and dingy or cluttered and messy. You want it clean, straight lines, simple, nice little ambience. Okay, this video is getting super long and I still have a lot of tips that I wanna share with you guys, so I'm going to try and speed it up. What I wrote next is collab and take advantage of social media. If you feel like you don't really know a lot of people, you don't know who to collab with, social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, great way to meet people and get yourself out there. Question that I get all the time, how do I get companies to work with me? This is what you do, tag them. First of all, in the tag words, say that you did a haul where you featured all Revlon products, all Maybelline products, all e.l.f. products. Put them in your tags, because what those companies are gonna do is they're gonna search to see who is talking about their videos, and in return, sometimes they contact those creators. The name of the game is to get them to notice you. Again, social media, tag them on Instagram, put it on their Facebook wall, put it on Twitter, get the company to notice you. I also recommend taking advantage of websites such as Famebit and Relio. Basically what they are, kind of like the newspaper ads for companies that want to work with YouTube creators. You will see a whole bunch of ads up what their budget is and what they want out of a video and you can apply and if they are interested in you, they will contact you back and you work out your deal from then. I will list both of those websites down below but I also want to add to just pick to work with companies of products that you sincerely would be interested in trying and using yourself because I'm telling you, if you just come out with something just for the sake that it's free or you're getting paid for it, your viewers will see right through it. I personally recommend that you are 100% honest and that you talk about the cons in addition to the pros because nothing is perfect 100% so just try to be as honest as possible and your viewers will really appreciate that. Next one is a very juicy topic and it is ways to get paid on YouTube. So there are three main ways that you can get paid on YouTube. Number one is your YouTube check or your Google check and this directly ties in with the amount of views that you get on your videos. Now when you get a view on a monetized video that means that it has an ad next to it and you're basically getting paid for the views on the ad that is right next to your video so YouTube will send out a monthly check as long as it hits 100 if it hasn't hit $100 then I believe that they roll it over to the next month so number one is according to how many views you get you get a check from YouTube actually straight from Google or you can get direct deposit number two is an outright flat fee for sponsored videos a lot of times you will get contacted by a company whether it's a hair extension company or a makeup company, a skincare company, and they will offer a certain amount of money for you to come out with a video on their product. I feel like you need to know your worth and know uh, all the work that goes behind a video and how much time and dedication and how much advertisement that you're actually giving that company. A lot of times sponsored videos or companies that sponsor YouTubers just want the merchandise to act as your compensation or your payment. 
some YouTubers are perfectly okay with that. If you feel like that is something that your time is worth, then great for you, but other YouTubers will require a monetary compensation on top of whatever merchandise that we may receive. And the last way is commission, and that's for any deals that you have, maybe it's a discount code that you have with the company or an affiliate link, and whatever deals or transactions are made using your link or your code, you get a cut of that money. So with the three of those things put together, the commission, your sponsored video fees, and your YouTube check, that is the three main ways that you can get paid from doing YouTube full-time or part-time or YouTube anyway. And my very last tip for you guys is just 100% being yourself. A lot of people ask me how I grew my channel and I really noticed that number one, when I was putting out a new video every other day, in addition to when I really relaxed and just showed my personality, that's when people picked up on that and my channel grew. In the beginning, I edited the heck out of my videos. I'm telling you guys, every little slip up, every stutter, every interruption, anything I would edit out of my video because I just felt that my videos had to be very professional and to the point. And for some people, that's how they are in real life. Some people are very professional and put together and straightforward. For me, I'm not. I'm like all over the place. I'm a very goofy person. I say really dumb things sometimes. I stutter a lot. And <laughs> once I started to show my true personality on my channel, I feel like a lot of you guys noticed that and liked that, um, that you guys felt that you could relate to that. So I definitely would say just be yourself and it really, just, it really does just come across the screen. So that was a heck of a lot of tips that I just mentioned to you guys. Holy crap, this video, <laughs> this video is 37 minutes long, so I'm gonna see how much I can chop it down. If you guys have any questions at all, definitely let me know down below. Um, also, if you guys have any questions that you see that you would like to know, just thumbs them up so they can go to the top, and I'll be sure to answer those. Um, because I know what it's like. I know what it's like starting a channel and not really having anyone to go to for answers and a lot of my tips and tricks are just self-taught because there is no one that I could basically go to. I just had to figure it all out on my own. So I'm definitely here to help you guys. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and on Facebook, on, on what? On Facebook and on my second channel, which is my vlog channel, which is my really crazy ratchet channel. So I will see you guys all soon. I love you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.